Here we have the Lenovo IdeaPad 3 14 inch. Now last week we reviewed the 17 inch and we really weren't all that impressed. It had cheap build quality, not a whole lot of features, and it was very expensive so it was fairly bad value. But today we want to review the smaller, younger sister, the 14 inch. And we want to find out if it's any good and if you should buy one yourself. Now before we get started, I want to praise the 14-inch platform. There is nothing new about a 14-inch laptop. They've been around as long as laptops themselves. However, more manufacturers are beginning to capitalize on the 14-inch form factor, and I really, really love it. I think it is my favorite. You see, it's a little bit bigger than the 13-inch, so you get a little bit more screen real estate, and you can fit more powerful items inside of them. However, they're not as big and bulky as the 15-inch machines, so they're a little bit easier to travel with, a little bit nicer to type on and take up less room. All in, I find myself more and more impressed with the 14-inch computers, and I really, really hope that more manufacturers go down the 14-inch path. Now, moving right along, specs on this thing. This particular unit comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. Now that is a four by one slot system, meaning that it will max out at 20 gigabytes, but all you have to do is pop the bottom cover off and you can toss in a, another RAM stick, or rather a larger RAM stick in there. It has a 256 gigabyte NVMe solid state drive, and that is upgradable to a 512, one terabyte, two terabyte as well. It has the Ryzen 5500U processor and Radeon graphics. So all of that translates to a very, very fast, powerful, and nimble computer. User benchmark gives this thing like a 19% on gaming, a 72% on desktop, and a 19% on workstation. And what that basically translates to is that if you want to do some light gaming on this thing, such as Minecraft, Roblox, Fortnite, it will have absolutely no problem knocking those out at all. In fact, you could probably even play some more modern titles on lower settings. As far as productivity work is concerned, this thing will handle any sort of Access, Excel, PowerPoint, multiple Chrome tabs, multiple Firefox tabs, multitasking, whatever it is, it will handle it with grace and poise. And as far as just workstation capabilities, such as audio and video processing, this thing is probably going to be outstanding for audio, mobile audio processors to be specific, but I'll get into that a little bit more later on. Suffice to say that it's just a very fast and all around powerful machine. Now let's dive into what it's like using this thing. The LCD on this thing is a 14 inch full high definition non-touch display. It's IPS, so it's got very, very good viewing angles. It's matte, so if you're near a window or outside on a college campus, the sun will not be that disruptive. It's clear, it's crisp, it's colorful. It is all around a fantastic display. Lenovo must have been listening because we shat on a lot of their computers with bad screens lately, but this one is the exception to the rule. It has a quality display panel in it, and they even boast about this like high active area ratio thing, which basically just translates to it has a narrow bezel. But nevertheless, it's a great quality panel, and I think that anybody that uses it for a long period of time won't be subjected to a lot of eye fatigue. For example, it has blue light blocking in it as well, and we didn't test that, but that said, supposedly it helps with longevity and, and eye strain. So if you're like a college student or somebody that's looking at a monitor all day long, it's supposed to be a little bit better for that. As far as other interactions with this computer are concerned, it has one of the best damn keyboards I have ever used in a laptop. I am a huge fan of the new keyboard in the MacBook Pros, and this one is equally as good. It's tactile, it's responsive, it just sort of feels good. It looks exactly like the, keybo uh, the keyboards in the other idea pads, but it absolutely isn't. There must be some kind of like soft membrane or something that they put beneath the keys because they just feel much, much gentler but still responsive to type on. If you're a typist, you will absolutely love this keyboard. It just feels so good and so accurate. It also has a backlight on it, which a lot of people will really like, but I'll get into the features a little bit more later. Trackpad on it is also pretty decent. It's a little bit small, but it's, to be, it's what you expect from the IdeaPad 3 series, but nevertheless, it's responsive. The cursor goes where you want. It doesn't ghost that bad, and it differentiates left and right click pretty well. The trackpad on it is very, very good. Now, to the Achilles heel of this particular machine. The speakers on it are garbage. Even though they don't advertise anything like Dolby Digital High Fidelity Audio or anything like that, they have no highs, they have no lows, they have no mids. They don't really distort, but they also don't really get that loud either. They're not the worst speakers I've ever heard, but they are pretty damn bad. All in, we rate them about a four out of 10, and you will definitely want a pair of headphones. 
Uh, if, you, if you were going to be listening to music, you could probably listen to a podcast or something like that. But again, they just really don't get all that loud. Um, speakers, really, really not too great, which is kind of a shame because when you have this beautiful 14-inch display that has as high a viewing angle as it does, you'd kind of like to be able to just sort of sit down with a couple of friends and watch a movie on this thing, especially if you're in a dorm. And that's kind of how, that's what kind of college kids do, right? They watch, they watch movies on their laptops, but this is going to be pretty tricky to do that with. As far as features are concerned, again, it does have the backlight on the keyboard. It also has a built-in webcam at the top with a little privacy shutter if you're the kind of person that likes to walk around naked in their bedroom. And it has a little dual array microphone built in as well. Gonna get into that in a second. Let's see what the webcam footage looks like now. This is the camera quality on the Lenovo IdeaPad 3 14 inch. And while it's not anything stellar, it will definitely get the job done with Zoom, Skype, and other productivity tasks. So while it's not the best webcam ever put into a laptop, it's absolutely in line with other computers in this price point. In fact, we've seen more expensive computers with less quality webcams in them. You'll be able to do Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, no problem. Now the microphone, which is kind of the interesting thing. It has a dual microphone array at the top, but this one also comes with something called the smart mic settings, which is basically where you can select between private, shared, and environmental mode, which adjusts the angles and the reception of the microphone in the laptop. It's a pretty cool feature, and we found that it's not too gimmicky, and it does in fact work pretty well. Here are some tests of the smart mic settings at work. This is how the audio sounds when private mode is enabled on the smart mic settings. This is how the microphone sounds when the shared setting is enabled on the smart mic settings. This is how the mic sounds when environmental is selected on the smart mic settings. It has Wi-Fi 6 and it's got Bluetooth 5, so it's set for a modern wireless radio digital age. And some other nifty features is it has Lenovo's voice system built in. Now, we're gonna do a separate video showcasing what the Lenovo voice system is capable of, but nevertheless, this particular unit has it. And while it doesn't have a Windows Hello compatible camera, it does have a Windows Hello compatible fingerprint reader. So all in, this thing is fairly feature rich, especially considering the price point. You can get this laptop for somewhere between 450 and 500 $540, depending on where the sales and this kind of thing. And we find that even if you are spending about 540 bucks on this thing, that it is just absolutely fantastic value. I am very, very sorry about the loading thing here. I'm, I don't know what is up with our internet at the office today. But nevertheless, talking about the laptop, let's get that nice little thing. It's coming back, people. It's coming back. Anyway. Um, it is just really, really good value. And I think that anybody that buys this thing is really going to love this computer. It's, it's built well, it's just sort of nice to look at, it's pleasant, it's a great machine. So who is this computer for? Well, we think this computer is going to be outstanding for college students. The battery life on this thing, practically speaking, is about eight and a half hours with, with uh, general use. So that means also people like travelers will do very good with this laptop as well. Like journalists, people that need to go in and out of an airport constantly. It's small, it's nimble, it can take a beating, something that you can throw in a backpack and beat up. It'll just be really, really good for those kinds of tasks. We also think that maybe like mobile audio processors or podcasters will do very, very well with this computer. Because of that smart mic uh, setting that's built into this thing, as well as the input and output, uh, audio processors will be able to toss in things like microphones and switches and all that other fun stuff that you audio kids do these days. Um, video editor is probably gonna wanna steer clear from this machine. Um, you can probably knock out some 1080p and some very highly compressed 4K editing, but it's really not a video editing machine. Uh, as far as light gaming is concerned, again, should have no problem with that. But the input and output on this thing, another thing that I really like about it, regular USB here, so that's where you're going to stick in your mouth dongle, and you've got an SD card, full size, so you mobile photographers are really going to enjoy it. And on that note, by the way, because of the fantastic screen and the very, very powerful, I think the autofocus on this thing is going ballistic, I apologize, I'm still working out the kinks in this new camera. Anyway, uh, because of the full size SD card reader, uh, and the fact that uh, it's got such a nice display in it, uh, your people that are doing Photoshop and Illustrator, uh, um, people doing photography on site will do really, really well with this laptop. You can put in a bigger NVMe solid state drive uh, or attach an external hard drive on this thing to do your on site editing. On this side, we have a headphone jack, which you will definitely need because, again, the speakers are junk. You've got a USB C port. Thank you, Lenovo. I don't know why they couldn't put that on the other one, but all manufacturers should be putting USB-C on all their computers, period. 
full-size HDMI. So if you want to attach it to a monitor or a projector or something like that, no problems there. Another USB super speed port, traditional uh, old school USB. Then of course, where you plug it in. Because it doesn't run on solar energy. Another feature that Lenovo seems to be very proud of is their intelligent thermal dynamics thing. Basically the fan on this computer's uh, speed can be adjusted based on how you're using it. So if you, uh, if you're gaming or doing some very, very heady, heavy processing on it, you can make it so the fan moves a little bit faster, kind of keeps it cool. Uh, or if you want to just sort of enjoy yourself and watch a movie or sit in silence, you can also turn it down to quiet mode, which is kind of cool. You do it by hitting the function and the Q button at the same time, and then you can toggle between the different settings. Now we kind of think that while this is a neat thing that kind of gives you power over the fan, we sort of wish the laptop did it intelligently on its own. A lot of laptops from Dell are doing this and they're doing it very well, so we don't know why Lenovo is making this kind of a manual thing, but nevertheless it's an option and a feature that they advertise. We really, really, really like this computer a lot and we highly recommend it. It's just got great value, great features, it's great bang for your buck, and we think that anybody that buys it is going to like it a lot. It's built well, we really have very few complaints with it. I think really our only complaints, the camera quality on it is satisfactory, not, it's a nitpicky thing. Uh, speakers on it are absolute trash. I would think that, I, in fact, really I think the only downfall of this computer is its speakers, but again, most people are gonna be using headphones regardless. Another thing we don't really get, which is kind of nitpicky, is that Lenovo does this whole four gigabytes soldered on and then one extra RAM slot on the side type deal. We don't know why Lenovo just doesn't do two RAM slots. You know, supposedly it's in order to kind of help with heat dissipation and, and size and being able to place the motherboard and stuff, but we really feel that you can engineer this laptop to where you could have two RAM slots, but Lenovo just doesn't do it on most of their machines. So again, 20 gigabytes is where this thing will max out, not a deal breaker for like 99% of people. In fact, the only people that need more than 20, gigs of, uh, 20 gigabytes of RAM are those probably running like virtual machines. Otherwise, it's just a great, great little computer. Go it, get it, buy one, do it, do it now. Anyway, uh, that said, great computer, highly recommended. Feel free to reach out to us in the comments section. If you have any questions, please like and subscribe, and we will be back with another video really soon.